Welcome back to X-Plane 11 and welcome back to traffic pattern work at Orbex Southampton Echo Golf Hotel India. A little bit of a better attempt this time. I've improved partly because I've analysed what I've already done. And that's a big part I think of traffic pattern work that you examine what you've done and, and the mistakes you've made. Here we're climbing, looking for 80 knots pattern altitude is 1000 feet AGL so pretty much just rounded it down for Southampton because the, the airport elevation is pretty close to zero it's about 50 feet so at 80 knots we're climbing for 1000 feet it's 700 feet that's 300 feet within pattern altitude we will start a standard rate turn 30 degrees to the left so we're returning to the left standard rate turn, you can see that on the turn and back indicator there, very clearly, trying to keep the ball centred, pulling the power back, still want to climb, I'm just bring it back so it's no more than 500 feet, a bit difficult to maintain that, but that's kind of the thing that we're looking for, we're pulling it back as we get, as we get close to 1000 feet, straightening it out, got the heading book set to be runway heading so again we're turning with quite a good uh, distance from the runway we're looking at a mile to a mile and a half from the runway just over a thousand feet so trying to keep altitude centered keep the vertical speed indicator centered again a standard rate turn getting that heading bug behind us once it's behind us we'll level off Maintaining about 75 knots here. And it, air speeds are important to monitor during this process. So we're climbing at 80 knots, we're looking at between 70 and 80 knots. Certainly at this part, we're on the downward leg, we're just on the crosswind leg. So we're maintaining about 75 knots. Looking at distance to the runway, that's acceptable. As we become a, a beam of the numbers, Lad flaps, look to start descending 500 feet per minute and speed will decay down to about 65 knots. I find that it's best not to fight that too much, not to try to maintain 75 because you end up very nose down. So as we're a beam, the numbers flaps down, we get that boost in lift so we have to counteract that a little bit looking at our airspeed, see it decaying at 70, we're looking for 500 feet per minute descent, airspeed decay down to about 65, which we want to hold on to, so I'm to just trim the aircraft to try to get that 65 knots, as we push the nose down, add a little bit of power, always when you change pitch, you change power and vice versa. So we're looking for 65 knots. At a 45 degree angle to the end of the runway, we again turn. See that we will lower more flaps. Watch the day speed, we want to keep it about, at about 60. So watching the trim, pitching the aircraft for 60 knots, maintaining 30 degree, a 30 degree standard rate turn maintaining 500 feet per minute descent and watching the heading boat we will level it out and there's the runway turn a little bit late here, I've been turning early overcompensated, turn a little bit late maintaining 500 feet per minute descent looking for 60 knots indicated airspeed looking for the runway so we're a little bit late on the turn in not exceeding that 30 degree bank just exceeding it a fraction but you want it about 30 degrees you don't really want to exceed 30 you don't want to go into a steep bank so we just left that turn fractionally late last stage of flaps because we are assured landing and i don't want the airspeed to drop below 50 knots 45 is VSO plus 1.3, but I'd rather stick at 50, below 50, 
things start to get a little bit risky, a little bit dangerous and lose a little bit of control down below 50, so I prefer to keep it at 50. Turn off track, I hope, center it. That's one trick to pick up on if you're using track IO. Important to disable it on short final. Because otherwise your viewpoint tends to move around a little bit. So we're looking to flare the aircraft. Bring your power back. And then just modulating the power. Looking for a smooth touchdown. There you have it. Swerving a little bit, you're still getting used to the pedal, still dialing in the response curve. But that was pretty good. I'm, I'm quite happy with that. It's not perfect, but I'm you know reasonably happy with that. Turning from base to final should have been a little bit earlier, not a massive amount. Just a fraction early would have been perfect. A little bit better rudder control after touchdown. But other than that, I'm quite happy with it. We're rolling into Orbex Southampton. Microsoft Flight Center, of course, now we're getting, we're cleaning the aircraft up, so retracting the flaps. Microsoft Flight Sim reminds me of the old style in Microsoft, Microsoft Flight Sim. Reminds me of Orbex, which is no bad thing. There's a really good art style to it. So as we roll it in, Practicing your traffic pattern is really useful, it's really important. You're pulling a lot of different things, a lot of different skills together. And if you plan to do VFR, it's an important skill to pick up. Again, you're picking up a lot of important skills on aircraft control. You're learning about the aircraft, you're learning about speeds. Again, I wouldn't let speed on short final fall below 50 knots. I find bad things happen when I do that, you're supposed to let it drift down or decay down to one point, or should I say VSO 1.3 at, at, at the lead, well at most, you don't want it to to, uh, to go below VSO 1.3, I would say 50 is the, uh, the safe speed to be aiming for, and get your, your flap control in, make sure you're lowering flaps at the right time, make sure you're not trying to do too much with flaps, so first stage of flaps are being with the numbers, second stage when you're turning in, and final stage of flaps when you're on short final and you're assured of landing. And practice that often enough, keep monitoring, keep looking out of the windscreen, but also at the same time Look at your airspeed, look at the turn and bank indicates, look at the ball, keep scanning your instruments, look at your vertical speed, always know what those instruments should be doing at any given time. Practice that over and over again and you will have the skills necessary to be able to complete your proper VFR flight. So I hope you found that interesting and as always feel free to like, comment and subscribe.